When I was younger, the Nintendo DS was the greatest thing to ever exist for me. I remember when I first heard about it while I was at Blockbuster reading Nintendo Power magazine, and I couldn't wait to get my hands on it when it came out. I mean, it had two screens, which was really weird for the time, but little did we know that it would only get weirder for Nintendo. And the amount of amazing games on the DS is just astounding. You have amazing Zelda games, amazing Kirby games, classics like Animal Crossing Wild World or Elite Beat Agents, and my personal favorite, Pokemon games. Not only was the DS home of some great main series Pokemon games, but we also had a lot of spin-off Pokemon games on the console. We had Pokemon Mystery Dungeon, which first came out on the console and is arguably the most successful Pokemon spin-off series to date, and we also had a few weirder ones like Conquest and Dash, which do have their fans I guess, and then we have which I think is the most interesting and weirdest of them all, Pokemon Ranger. Pokemon Ranger was one of the most bizarre concepts for a spin-off Pokemon game, since it featured the weirdest concepts for Pokemon. Mystery Dungeon had the unique experience of letting players turn into a Pokemon, while Ranger, which was the other main spin-off line for the Nintendo DS when it comes to Pokemon, had you become a Pokemon Ranger in a faraway region of Fior, where you don't even battle or catch Pokemon in the same way as you do in the main series games. I remember when this game was coming out that I really wanted it, since at the time if a game had Pokemon slapped on the cover, I knew I had to have it, which is still true to this day. I ended up getting it for Christmas the year it came out, and I was very confused when I first played it. I'm guessing the inspiration for the Ranger games come from the anime, as there were a few episodes with Pokemon Rangers who behave similar to how the Rangers behave in the games. There is also a Pokemon Ranger trainer class in the main series of Pokemon games, however these don't exactly resemble the Rangers featured in the Ranger games or the anime. Might just be a coincidence or a mistranslation, or maybe they just redesigned them. In this video we will only focus on the first Pokemon Ranger game, as it's the only one that I've played so far. The game starts off with the player docking in Fall City of the Fior region, where being a Pokemon Ranger is the main objective, as opposed to being a Pokemon Master. Now I don't know about you guys, but to me, something about being a Pokemon Master like in the main series game seems a lot cooler than, uh, this. You get to choose between a male or female character, which is nice, with the only real difference between the two being your initial Pokemon. If you're a boy, you get Minum, and if you're a girl, you get Plusle. After you get all that done, you get a chance to learn how to be a Pokemon Ranger from Spencer, who acts sort of like your teacher at the start of the game. He gives you your capture styler, which is what Pokemon Rangers use to tame Pokemon, which looks a lot like a Beyblade. Now I'm not exactly sure how spinning a Beyblade around a Pokemon helps calm it down and capture it, but screw it, your job is to become a Pokemon Ranger, not to ask questions. The game is also probably responsible for breaking a lot of Nintendo DS's since you have to quickly draw multiple circles on your touchscreen consecutively as fast as you can in order to catch these Pokemon. This game is probably part of the reason why my original Nintendo DS's touchscreen is so wonky, but luckily I got a new DS Lite recently to replay this game. Each Pokemon that you capture behaves a little bit differently, some jump around, some attack you and force you to redraw your circles because they break them, and you can even use some of the Pokemon you've caught previously to assist you in catching new Pokemon. This certainly adds an extra element to the game, as opposed to the mainline games where every single Pokemon can be caught with the same method more or less. One strange thing about the Pokemon Ranger games, though, is that it only allows you to use each Pokemon you capture one time before they are released in the wild. You can also only have a total of 5 Pokemon with you at a time, including your Plusler or Minum which never goes away, without having the option to store your extra Pokemon in a PC or something like that. This directly contradicts the whole mantra of catch em all that all the other Pokemon games have, but I guess they did this to prevent players from stocking up on a ton of Pokemon in the early game so they don't have to spend time catching Pokemon later on when it would be more difficult. I really was not a fan of this feature at all as a kid when I first played through this game, since I thought it was insanely cool how you could catch starter Pokemon like Mudkip or Torchic, which was the first time you were able to do that in a Pokemon game, only to have to say goodbye to them moments after you capture them when you needed to burn down a tree or get through a certain obstacle. Now something tells me that burning a log in the middle of a forest isn't the best way to go about going through a forest because you might start a forest fire, but I guess that's why they have water Pokemon. One of my favorite Pokemon to use while I was playing through the game was Magnemite. Now Magnemite, as well as a few other electric Pokemon, sort of act like a charger for your capture stylus since it can wear it down if a Pokemon attacks you trying to catch them, forcing you to have to recharge it. This was very convenient, although it was tough having to make the decision between holding onto a Magnemite on my team so I could charge my stylus later, or swapping it out for a different Pokemon that could help me get through a certain obstacle later in a certain area. In the end, I'm glad how they were able to make each Pokemon do a pretty unique thing to help you get through the game, but it would have been nice to be able to keep multiple Pokemon with you throughout the game, just like the main series games and Mr. Dungeon games allow you to do. I do understand why they did it, but having only 5 Pokemon feels really restrictive, and as cliche as this sounds, 
you aren't able to form a bond with your Pokemon like you are in the main series games or the Mystery Dungeon games. Although these games are really bizarre, and I'm sure that nobody asked for a Pokemon game like this, they can still actually be a lot of fun. I still haven't beaten this game fully yet as I'm currently replaying through the game for this video, but I did manage to get the rest of the Pokemon Ranger games a few years ago so I could play through the whole Ranger series whenever I feel like it. It is a shame that we never received a Pokemon Ranger game on the 3DS, and at this point I don't think we'll ever see another version of this game again since it's been over 7 years since we've seen the last one. Luckily the original Pokemon Ranger is available on the Wii U Virtual Console if you want to check it out, Although since the game is mainly played on the touchscreen, I think you're better off going to a local video game store and picking up the physical copy to play on your Nintendo DS. It also works on the 3DS, which is quite nice. These games aren't for everybody, but if you're a Pokemon fan, I recommend at least trying one of these games out, especially since they can be found for $20 or less, which really isn't that bad for a Pokemon game. So that is going to be it for this video on Pokemon Ranger. Let me know what you guys think of Pokemon Ranger in the comment section down below, as I'm sure there are a lot of diehard Pokemon Ranger fans out there that watch this video. Thank you guys so much for watching, make sure you guys leave a like down below because it helps channel a ton. Subscribe if you're new with notifications turned on so you don't miss a future upload. Have a great rest of your day, I will see you guys next time, and bye bye.